When I was 14 years old, I had an experience that dramatically influenced the direction of my future. It was an ordinary evening. I was playing football in the back garden of my house against my 15-year-old brother. Our one versus one football games were always pretty physical because, as you'd expect with teenage brothers, we were competitive. I had the ball at my feet and I was about to shoot, but then, out of nowhere, he slide tackles me and takes me out completely. It was an awful challenge, to say the least. Obviously, I couldn't let him get away with that. So in retaliation, I picked up the ball and I kicked it at him. Smacked him straight in the face. He fell down to the ground. His reaction was one that I wasn't expecting. He just started to cry hysterically and that wasn't a usual response from him because he was a tough guy. He was a rugby player. He stood up with his mouth shaking and tears running down his cheek. He looked at me in the eyes and then screamed, I hate you, I hate you, I want to die, I hate you. He then turned around and ran into the house as quickly as he could whilst repeating those same words. At first I took a step back and I thought, whoa. That reaction was massively over the top. Like, come on, man. Like, we have been through so much more than this. Get a grip of yourself. Regardless, you never want to see a member of your family that upset. So I ran into the house after him to make sure he was okay. I walked up the stairs and I opened the door to his bedroom. That's when I witnessed my brother attempt to take his own life. Once I managed to stop him, I thought to myself, I know you said you wanted to die, but I didn't really think that you meant it. I now know that reaction wouldn't have killed him, but I was just a kid. I was 14 years old, and I saw the brother that I loved, respected, and admired, wanting to take his own life because of something that I did to him. Well, that's what I thought anyway. What I didn't know was that he was experiencing severe depression at that point and had been for the past three months. I literally had no idea. Three days after the incident, he was visited by a crisis psychiatric team and they admitted him into a mental health inpatient ward where he stayed for the next four to five months. I generally thought it was all of my fault. It affected me really badly, as you can imagine because in addition to the guilt that I was feeling, the thought of my brother attempting to take his own life played continuously in my mind. It was the only thing that I thought about every single second of every single day. Sometimes it was in the forefront of my mind, but then sometimes it was playing on in the background. But it was always playing again and again and again. This thought was emotionally charged and didn't switch off for over a year. It's almost as if it had messed with my personal settings. It had turned my positive emotions down. But it hiked up my anger levels. My body became consumed with this raging aggression. The feeling of empathy was removed from my body and the voice in my head that told me that something was wrong had completely stopped working. During that one year period of battling with this uncontrollable anger. There are things that I did regularly that I regret deeply, like hitting people for little or no reason. It only took something very small for me to lose full control of my actions. That's why I was physically and verbally abusive towards others on a daily basis. If you would have seen me then, you probably would have described me as lost, violent, a bully, wouldn't you? And I don't actually blame you because I was all of those things. But I was also so much more than that. You wouldn't have realized that before the incident with my brother, that I was a mummy's boy. I was polite and I was kind. But your definition of me would have been purely based on what I had done without thinking about the reasoning behind it. 
fortunately for me, my mum was able to connect the dots between my anger and my brother's depression. She was the only person who realized that my anger was a result of the pain that I was feeling. So she dragged me to the psychiatrist. And that's when I realized there was actually a name for what I was going through. And that was called post-traumatic stress disorder, also known as PTSD. After months of intense therapy, anger management, and even brain scans, I started to get better. My thoughts became less and less emotionally charged, and my positive emotions were being slowly turned back up again. I had a drive. I was getting on track. But my brother's depression continued to get worse. When he was living at the mental health inpatient ward, other young people and members of staff could empathize with what he was going through. He was no longer an outsider. They were able to look underneath the thick blanket of his depression and have a sneak peek into the loving, caring, and funny guy that he was. By doing that, they realized there was so much more to him than the person that he was presenting to the world. I still remember the day they got discharged. There was a glimmer of hope in his eyes again. However, it only took him a couple of months in the real world to spiral downwards. Although he was much better, he hadn't fully recovered and therefore found social situations extremely difficult. People labeled him as weird, miserable, a Billy no -mates. They only saw the surface of his depression and were unable to look underneath the blanket where the real version of himself was hiding. All my brother wanted was for people to see him for him, not his depression. It had taken him months of living in a mental health inpatient ward to unstitch the labels that society had given him. But now they were stitched onto him again with an even stronger thread. He couldn't shake these labels off. In his mind, he thought there was no ending in sight. This is how we always thought he would be. Two weeks before our GCSEs, I walked into the changing rooms in school. I was actually full of positive energy at this point because for the first time ever, I'd actually done some work towards my exams. So I was optimistic. I was looking forward to them. Then I turned around the corner and I saw my brother. He was standing on the edge of a bench, ready to hang himself. His depression had led him to believe that this was the only way he could remove the labels that society had given him. Rather than having sympathy for him and making sure that he was okay, this triggered my post-traumatic stress. My happiness turned into aggression like that. So without thinking, I ran up to him. I grabbed him by the collar. I pulled him down to the floor, dragged him across, pinned him up against the wall. Then I hit him again and again and again. I thought he was doing this to emotionally destroy me. He knew how much this affected me. Not once did I think about what he was going through. Although I managed to stop him, I wish I could go back and change my reaction. He really didn't deserve that. I wish I said this to him instead. I see you, John. I'm with you. Hey, I've got no idea what you're going through, buddy, but I'm with you through this because I know you're more than the person that you're presenting to the world. The same was true for me. I was more than the violent, abusive bully that people saw in me. Don't get me wrong. I needed to, we all need to, take full responsibility for our actions. But I believe that we're not defined by our worst actions. I am not defined by my worst actions because our actions don't always fully represent the person who we truly are. For example, 
when we go through a difficult time or we deal with a mental illness. Our actions are like the front cover of a book. It only tells you a snippet of the true story. You have to open the book and you have to read the pages underneath to get a real understanding about what's going on inside. I didn't do that with my brother. The real version of himself was always inside of him. But just like everyone else, I didn't look past his front cover. And I suppose just like people didn't look past the front cover of my anger. Years later, both my brother and I are on different paths. Paths that aren't defined by the lowest and most difficult challenges of our life. Instead, we've realized that it's never too late to reinvent yourself and that your past shouldn't hold you back from creating a happy, positive, and healthy life. To prepare for this talk, I interviewed my brother and I asked him the question, how would you define yourself today? He responded with the biggest smile on his face. And he said the word, happy. I would say the same thing. And ultimately, that is what I wish for all of you today. Thank you. <laughs>